every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, and I'm Kenneth Copeland. Now, you know right here is where you usually put your name? That is my name. Victory. Yes. I agree with that. <laughs> Amen. 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 That is my name. My name is Victory, and I'm going somewhere to happen. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, okay. Yes, All sir. right. <laughs> Thank you, Father. We do have the victory in Christ yes, Jesus. Victory over death, victory over hell, victory over the grave, victory over poverty, victory over sin. Hallelujah. We have the victory in Christ Jesus, and we are victorious, and this is the victory that overcomes the, the, world. the, the world, even our faith. faith, and this is a faith broadcast. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So let's turn over there to 1 John. This little book of 1 John, of course, the, the Gospel of John, John wrote what he saw. He was there. He's the one that describes that last meal in such detail that it's, and, and that, that Seder meal there that night, and it, it's in just semi-darkness and all of the things that, that happened there that night. But now 1 John, He's writing a letter mm -hmm. that really is uh, a synopsis of all of that put together. And he's writing it to someone so that they can have the benefit of what he learned about love firsthand. Firsthand. He says so in verse 1. That's what he did. Chapter 1. Yes, sir. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes. Yes. So he's writing all of this down now as a manual, if you will. Synopsis. I love that. It's good. Now, there are things. Uh, there's there are things here that I've circled and underlined in red to call attention. Uh, four eighteen. I wrote up above here. <laughs> in in, in four eighteen, there is no fear in love. But perfect or mature love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. I wrote up here four in red, four eighteen. He has loved all the fear out of me. Yes, yes. He loved the fear out of me. Yes, he did. And anybody can read this book in a few minutes. So, I do want to look, especially in this fifth chapter today. And, uh, of course, in the fifth chapter, that's whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. But I, I want to go to the classic Amplified for this. Everyone who believes adheres to, trust, and relies on the fact that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is a born-again child of God, and everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him, his offspring. I don't care who they are. I don't care where they go to church. I don't care what they believe. Yeah. Now, they, they are my brother or my sister. I had the Lord say this to me back there years ago. The Lord said, most of my people don't realize that there comes a time in life when you're not the daddy anymore. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said this, he was talking at this time specifically about my son, John. He said, he said, number one, when John was a child, you were responsible for taking care of him. But then he grew up. Right. And you saw to it that he accepted Jesus as his Lord. I said, yes, I did. He said, now, and now that he's grown up, he's a grown young man, he's not primarily your son, he's your brother in the Lord. And he said, you've been magnifying John's sin, and I want you to stop it right now. My, my, my. 
He said, you don't magnify the sin of some other man that's working for you. And this is back when John wasn't, but uh, he was about uh, 15, I guess, something like that. But he was working out here. And uh, he said, you, you don't do that. So he said, you stop magnifying his sin. You treat him like a man and you talk to him like a brother. That's right. That's right. That verse, first verse of chapter five, it is, it, it's the simplicity of the new birth. It's really simple. Oh, that's Religion good. makes it hard. Yeah. But it's really a simple thing. The entire gospel is simple. It's not beating up what you're just saying. It's not beating up on sinners. It's preaching Jesus accurately. Yes. And he is a brother in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to preach Jesus righteousness to my brother accurately. And then, and then that will represent Jesus. So now if he, if, if he kicks back at it, I don't take that personally. Sure. No. I'm his teacher. That's exactly right. And so when we zero in on loving him and portraying Jesus right, it's attractive. Go ahead with that, Greg. When we present Jesus correctly, that's exactly what Moses did when he messed up, why he couldn't enter in. He misrepresented the Lord Jesus Christ. He did, didn't he? He, he said, strike the rock the first time, indicating that Jesus, the Messiah, will be stricken. And he said the next time, he's trying to teach him Mark 11, 23 and 24. The Lord wanted him to teach him that right then. Say it. Speak to the rock now, and it'll give forth. Whoever shall say unto this mountain, that rock was a mountain. And he was trying to get that concept across to him. And out of his emotions, out of his anger at the people, he didn't do that. He struck the rock. And that cost him. So a lot of Christians... In want, reality, he hit the people with that rod. Yes, he did. He used sin yes, he did. to beat them up. He misrepresented the Lord. That's what he did. And so a lot Who of... Who is love. Who's love. And they didn't believe God loved him. No. Neither did the Pharisees. They, they said, they, he brought us out here to kill us. That's right. Would we, just, we, we wish we'd have stayed in Egypt. At least we had something to eat. Their hearts melted, it said, when they got the report of the spies that went into the land, and there's giants in the land, all the things they can't do. Two of them came back saying, we can do this, Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. And so this is why you get Mark, this is why you get Deuteronomy 28. It's why you get all the instructions that we've gone over in previous programs. When you go in, you'll stand on these two mountains, the Blessing mm -hmm. Mountain, the Cursing mm -hmm. Mountain. All of that stuff happened to that next generation because that first generation let their heart be melted. I'll submit this, that that that's what happened in America with COVID mm -hmm. and largely in the church. We believed a report mm -hmm. yes. and allowed, and I make, don't get mad at me. We allowed our hearts to be melted, the people's hearts to be melted mm -hmm. instead of standing up and speaking up what the word says. A lot of Christians want to love from their emotions, Brother Copeland. He's not emotion, he's a spirit. Now he has emotions, but he's not governed by his that's emotions. Right. Just like, uh, like Moses was, just like you're talking about, the one the Lord told you how to begin to treat John. Emotions can go from high to low to low to high and be all over the place, happy, sad, but the, our Father's not that way. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you want to look at an earthly example, that somebody we know, Keith Moore, mm -hmm. perfect example of that. He is not going to let his emotions, uh, Andrew Womack is another one. The Word says this, I know his character and his nature. And so once you know the character and nature of God, he's been represented correctly to you. This is what 1 John is all about. That's what it is, isn't it? He's representing this Jesus that we knew, we handled, we touched him, we walked with him. Here's the instructions of how, what love is. Here's what grace and truth is. Now, who were these people that he wrote to? I believe he's writing to the, the entire New Testament church and, and Jews that are believers as well, certainly for us as well, because he's in that room with Jesus in I believe it was chapter 17 of John when he was praying for the people who will believe based on yes. your testimony, your words. Well, that's us. Yeah, that's right. So that is written to me. First John 1, 9 is written to me. All of it's written to me as a believer. And so it's representing Jesus correctly. My identification is in the Messiah, is in Christ. Walk in the light as he's in the light. That's what he'll tell us. Don't be in Christ, but walking in darkness. No. And it's, it's that 
figure talking. He's talking to a brother now. That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's not talking as a, an apostle to a child. He's saying, walk in the light as he's in the light. Don't be walking over here in the darkness with your conversation and the way you manner of life you live in. You're a child of the light. And so that's what the whole book's one of my favorite books in all scripture. See, the more love is perfected, the more faith is perfected. When he gets rid of the hate, you just said it a while ago, mm -hmm. out of my life, now there's room for faith. Because, or fear, we gets rid of the fear, that's what you said. Fear is the opposite of faith. My faith's not working if I'm in fear. So when this love is perfected and that fear is out of my life, there's more room for faith in my life. If I grow in the knowledge of focusing on love, fear must depart and faith flourishes. Fear must depart from love. Why? Love perfected casts out all fear. So a person's walking in love, but fear is all around us. Right. And Satan will come immediately. That's all he has. Jesus took his keys away from him. He yes. took all of his armor away from him. He didn't leave him anything but the lie. Mm -hmm. And so in the book of Hebrews, particularly in the classic Amplified, it said he delivered them through all of their lives were bound up with that haunting uh, fear of death, surrounded by it. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Now you come into this smaller, mm -hmm. this, this small letter, and he begins to deal with things that you would only deal with, with people who are on a an adult level. Right. Most particularly in this fifth chapter, mm -hmm. he comes down and closes this. In that. He's tying all the letter together in chapter five. Yes. He, that's what he's really doing. He mentions overcomers a few times. He'll say it in the book of Revelation as well. An overcomer is not a special class of Christian. They're not a special class. It's just somebody that's done what this says. You, you, if you'll do this, you're going to overcome because you're in Christ. Yes. He's an overcomer. <clears throat> now, this you and I both know that. from... <clears throat> from our <clears throat> excuse me, from our military background, that number one, you're gonna have to know your enemy, mm -hmm. and number two, we have seen now in World War II, uh, our leadership was, was was demanding unconditional surrender. Mm -hmm. Unconditional. So, how did they? How did we get that? With overwhelming force. Right. They fought until they could not fight anymore without being wiped off of the face of the earth. So you come at Satan with overwhelming force. You come at him with the power of the name. You come at him with the power. We have overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, yes. our word of faith, because that faith has to come out of our mouths yes. and the power of the love of God. Right. He has no defense for that. None. We are Americans. I did not fight in D-Day, but I share in the victory of D-Day. Yes, you do. I didn't fight in the Revolutionary War. My great, 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 great grandfather did, but I share in the victory of the Revolutionary War. I didn't fight in the Civil War, but I share in the victory of the Civil War. Yes. I didn't defeat Satan in hell, but I share in you the victory. You share in that victory. Yes, sir. Amen. Because we are soldiers in the army of yes. the Lord. And we win. Yes, we do. And this little book is a victory book. Whew. So let's get down into that fifth chapter. Yeah. And we're talking about whosoever's here. <clears throat> Whosoever believes. Well, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe he is the Messiah. I'm going to go to the classic Amplified. 
Everyone who believes, adheres to, trusts, and relies in the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, is a born again child of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him, his offspring. By this we come to know and recognize and understand that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments, His orders, His charges, when we keep His ordinances and are mindful of His precepts and His teaching. For the true, the true love hmm. of God is this, excuse, that we do His commands, keep His ordinances, and are mindful of His precepts and teaching. And these orders of his are not irksome, burdensome, oppressive, or grievous. No. For whatever is born of God is victorious over the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Who is that that is victorious over that conquers the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on that fact. Amen. Now, verse 11 in the King James, this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this is son, He's life is in the Son. This is the testimony, that evidence. This is evidence. Yes, sir. He's talking about evidence that'll stand up in court of heaven and earth. Oh, you gotta love it, right? Yeah. This is that testimony, that evidence. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who possesses the Son has that life. He who does not possess the Son of God does not have that life. I write this to you who believe in and hear to and trust and rely on the name. I write this to you who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the name of the Son of God in the peculiar services and blessings conferred by Him on men that so that you may know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have life, yes, eternal life. This is the confidence, assurance, and privilege of boldness which we have in Him. We are sure we are sure. Mm -hmm. Say that with me. We are sure. Yes. What is sure? Surety. Guarantee. I guarantee this is true. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, according to his word, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. <laughs> you could spend a week on that right there. Yes, sir. What is his plan? It's a love plan. If you're full of strife, you can forget this. It's a love plan that guarantees your success. Yes. It's a surety. Can, this is nothing new. King David, when he's dying, he brings Solomon in and gives him instructions. It's over in 1 Kings 2. He says, uh, obey the teachings that you've been taught, yes. then you will, you will be a success no matter what you do. And that was true. And, and he, it's absolutely true. I'm and this is what he's you, teaching Solomon now. messed it up in a lot of ways, but he was success. Overcomers. He overcame because he did what his father had told him. See, the four-minute mile for a long time oh, was yeah. in, is impossible until yeah. somebody did it. Breaking the sound barrier was impossible until somebody did it. There are things that seem impossible today. It's not impossible. You have the greater one on the inside of you, and you'll do it. There's answers to everything, and I believe the church has them. We just got to listen to it. Well, there's no question listen about to that. It. We've got and to work on growing in there, here. There's a saying in aviation, the faster you get, the easier it is to go fast. Now, you get a car on the ground, you go as fast, I'm telling you, the fastest car in the world. That's as fast as he can go. Mm -hmm. You take an airplane going that fast, and then you get it off of the ground, and now he can go faster. And the faster he goes, the faster he can go. And once they broke the sound barrier, and now the sound barrier is no barrier at all. They have fighter airplanes now that can cruise. They don't need afterburners to go through the sound barrier. 
they can cruise through it. That's amazing. Isn't it? Because they learned the laws that they dominated. Learned the laws, and one step at a time, they kept getting faster and faster and faster. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're doing in this book of 1 John. We're learning the laws that pertain. That, that pertain to success. That's exactly right. And the gateway to success is, is love. love. That's, that's, that's what the, the overcoming way is love. That's exactly right. So now I want to get down here. Let's, let's look very carefully here. We just read that 15th verse. The 16th verse. If anyone sees his brother, believer, committing a sin that does not lead to death, the extinguishing of life, he will pray and God will give him life. Yes, he will grant life unto all those who sin is not one leading to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. That is what the world calls the unpardonable sin. And just to put it down into plain language, right. there is a way, and I can take you, uh, take you through the book of Hebrews and right here and lead you right up into that. You would have to be born again, filled with the Spirit, and have tasted the good Word of God and the powers of the world to come. So this person has ministered, and, and they're born again, filled with the Spirit, has ministered and walked in the gifts of the Spirit. And for them to trample, trample underfoot the blood that, that he was saved by and counted an unholy thing. He is doomed to hell. And, there's, and, that, and the Scripture doesn't say God wouldn't forgive him. He said it's impossible to bring him again to repentance. Right. And that's it. I used to think I had committed it for the longest time. I was always afraid I'd committed it. And the devil tormented over me. Well, I committed. If you're worried you've committed it, you haven't. That's right, because you'd repent. Right, yeah. But it's in the book of Hebrews, it said this is when you go on to perfection or go on to maturity. It, he's, it's, it simply says it's impossible to bring that person to repentance. And I have witnessed some of this. Mm -hmm. And. Um, that uh, one, one person that Brother Hagin talked about was a man that came into a service and interpreted a tongue and, and was very accurate about it. And, and he said, I suppose you um, think somebody that lives like me couldn't interpret that. But I can. And to the devil with Jesus Christ and all he stands for. Only he didn't say that. Mm, yeah. Well, he's doomed. Right. But glory to God. And here we are out of time. Oh, oh whoa, <laughs> whoa. Where, where's all that time? I don't know. It was getting good. <laughs> but at least we got it. Come on, Jeremy, help us out, man, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you, Papa. Now, today on this broadcast, we heard from 1 John 4, 18 that there is no fear in love and that perfected love casts out fear. Now, did you hear how Brother Copeland said it? God loved the fear out of you. That's so good. That's the power of love in action. Love comes in and fear goes out. There is no fear in love, but full-grown love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. God created you to continually live in His love and receive all the benefits that come with it. Learn to live by love with the Power of Love package. You'll get the Power of Love CD and Love Confession CD and booklet by Kenneth Copeland, along with Love, The Secret to Your Success, a mini book by Gloria Copeland. With love, you cannot fail. It expels sickness, lack, and anything else that's a part of the curse. All other spiritual forces derive their actions from love, faith, forgiveness, the gifts of the Spirit all begin with love. Activate its power as you plant God's Word in your heart and speak it out by faith. You'll begin to see God control your circumstances through you instead of your circumstances controlling you. Answer every doubt, symptom, and situation with God's Word. 
Enter into the peace and victory His love provides. Request the Power of Love package free from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Discover how to overcome any obstacle in your life through the power of love. Plant God's words of love deep in your heart, speak words of love with your mouth, and see miracles show up in your life. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. When love, the love of God increases, then fear decreases. Now it's time for some of you to get the fear out of your life. How do you do that? You focus in on the love of God by asking Jesus, who is the son of love, to come into your heart, to be the Lord of your life, make him your savior. And if today is the day of your salvation, then just pray this out loud after me. Say, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. Thank you for loving me and giving yourself for me. I receive your love. I believe your love. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Take my life and do something with it in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. That means the love is in you right now. Wherever, God, wherever God's love is, fear is not. Fear's not there. That means, that means fear is being driven out of your heart right now. And Kenneth Copeland Ministries has put together some free resources to help you develop your faith in the love of God. We call this the salvation package. In this package, we include a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And along with this book, we're going to send you a couple of brochures that are here just to help you learn how to read and how to study your Bible. And these materials are going to help you learn how to keep yourself in the love of God. And as Brother Copeland says, stay on the victory side of life. So if you prayed that prayer with me today and this was and is the day of your salvation, just request your free salvation package at kcm.org. And let us know. We want to hear about it. If you prayed and received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior today, contact KCM. Let us rejoice with you. We want to hear the story and we want to give God the glory. Now, remember to check KCM's Advent calendar. There are gifts and downloads now through December 25th that all point our hearts to the gift that God gave us, and that's Jesus. So to open up your gift today or to sign up, just go to kcm.org slash Advent. And then be sure, be sure to join us on this broadcast again tomorrow. Brother Copeland will be back. Professor Greg Stevens will be here as they encourage us to live in an atmosphere of God's love. You don't want to miss this. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Learn more about your new life in Christ. Email us today at partners at kcm.org.uk and request your free salvation package.